Hi, I'm Mario Labad and welcome to Heads Up, a hub for promising entrepreneurs, CEOs, managers, executives, and those who have huge gravitational potentials to become business leaders in the community and the workplace they belong. This is our chance to learn and gain some tips and encouragement on how to start a business and be an impactful entrepreneur in the future. Our guest tonight is a young business enthusiast and a budding business leader. A sophomore at Ateneo de Manila University take up BS Management Engineering. In preparation of achieving his business goals, he is actively participating in school activities that could boost his entrepreneurial skills in the future. As an active member of the Management Engineering Association, he was able to hold titles such as Project Manager of the Ateneo Challenge for Transformational Sustainability or ACTS and ASEC, an esteemed organization that leaves out the core competencies of youth leadership and cultural understanding and connecting business organizations, NGOs to youth leaders. Aside from keeping an active lifestyle through sports, he is one of the official candidates of Mr. International Philippines 2023 and will have a grand finals this month. Friends, please welcome the good-looking and future business executive, Mr. Matthew Siegel. So, Hi, Mario. Thank you for having me here. Oh, hi. Um, so how's everything with you right now? How was how school? Well, I'm doing great. Uh, school's been, we just started off okay. uh, just yesterday. Mm -hmm. And so I'm quite excited to go through school and also go through my recent mm -hmm. journey. But before anything else, I would like to congratulate you for being part of Mr. International Philippines 2020. Uh, but, but before we go to pageantry, let's talk first the other side of Matthew, the business and entrepreneurial aspects of his life. Now, you are taking management engineering. It's a fast becoming as one of the most popular courses among millennials and Gen Zs, and one of the most prestigious courses offered by the Jesuit institution. Just curious, is management engineering the same as engineering management? Well, management engineering looks into um, analytics, and it also goes further into that, going in through optimization of some things. So if you say engineering management, that would be more focused on the engineering aspect. Okay. However, in, compar in comparison to management engineering, management engineering focuses on optimizing business segments, and it helps in the an it helps in analyzing the business segments that there are cur we currently have. So mm -hmm. whether it be consulting it or whether it be trying to help uplift a business segment, that would be management engineering. engineering okay, yeah. <laughs> anyway, briefly, what is the course management engineering is all about? Well, like what I said, it's, it's very diverse. Mm -hmm. So people would say that management engineering would be a person uh, a graduate from management engineering would be a person that is a jack of all trades. So we are very much adapted to different industries and we are prepared. For example, in the recent years, they have integrated coding, which we know as a field that is very much, uh, very much lively today. It's very much important in today's context. Mm -hmm. And so Management engineering includes that course into our journey in Ateneo. And why is it considered as one of the one of the most prestigious courses in your school? Well, of course, management engineering is truly one of the top courses in Ateneo because of their rigorous program. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of courses that we have to go through, and these do help us become esteemed young esteemed young entrepreneurs and hopefully business leaders in the future. But it, is, it holds its reputation because of how hard it is to get in. Mm -hmm. From what I remember, it's about 15% of the total Ateneo asset takers that mm -hmm. are only allowed to be in the course. Mm -hmm. But also, you have to note that even if you get in, 
it's harder to stay in. Mm -hmm. So there's a retention <laughs> program. Yes, it's true. There's a retention program in place where we have to keep up with keep up with good grades mm -hmm. and make sure that we are at the top of our game. Mm -hmm. We excel in academics. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm pretty sure you're one of them. Well, yes, I am. <laughs> <hopefully>. <laughs> and you want to be a business consultant and entrepreneur someday. How is your course preparing you for this? Well, business consultancy is a very good field for me. I think when I was really young, I saw, uh, I saw an organization come into our school and talk to us about business consultancy. So business consultancy, it looks into the systems in place or already existing um, departments of a company. And, and so what business consultants do is we try to optimize it. And like what I said earlier, optimizing is one of the key factors that drive management engineering. There's frameworks, there's design thinking, mm -hmm. there's systems operations, and there's a lot more that goes hand in hand into building what I aspire to be in mm -hmm. the future. Mm -hmm. Is this course really your choice or some someone prodded you to take this, your family maybe? Well, actually, this is my choice. Okay. So going through... <laughs> back in high school then. Yeah, back in high school, it was uh -huh. my choice to go... How were you introduced to the course? I was introduced to the course with their with my organization's project, it's actually oh. Prime. Mm. So this would be a introduction course, but or let's say it's an introduction to what ME is like. Mm -hmm. So management engineering is ME. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I also learned that at your young age, you are one of the incorporators of your family-owned business. Yes. The Sig Seagal International Sales Corporation, located in Marikini City. What exactly the, is the nature of this? family business in yours? Well, the nature of the business is a hardware store. Okay. We are currently a retail-based operation located in Marikina City. Mm -hmm. So we are currently involved in a lot of construction mm -hmm. and also just primarily selling to the main market of the Marikina public. Mm -hmm. And what exactly is your participation as an incorporator of the business? So as an incorporator, I'm actually working on the admin level mm -hmm. of the company. Mm -hmm. So this would be in HR or behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Because knowing that I'm in school, my family and the other incorporators have told me to tone down my work first okay. and just try to get involved as much as possible. And for me, that would be the admin work behind the scenes. How, how much time do you devote to, your, to the family business in a day? Well, in a day, let's say two to three hours. Every day? Yes. A routine? A routine, yes, it uh, was. Implemented by your family? <laughs> Not so much. Maybe my own, my own. Okay. Discipline? Yes. Okay. Now, um, you seem to be very active in school activities. How much time do you devote in those non-academic activities vis-a-vis -vis your, your time to study? Well, there actually goes a lot of time. My, my time goes a lot into these organizations because mm -hmm. I hold them very close to my heart. And mm -hmm. for me, they are... Uh, they help me develop to who I want to be. Mm -hmm. And so I spend, let's say, 30 minutes to an hour a day working on those specific projects that I'm involved in mm -hmm. and maybe a meeting once or twice a week. Mm -hmm. But overall, these are manageable through asynchronous tasks, mm -hmm. meaning whatever task I'm given, I just do it on my free time and shouldn't take more than an hour. And how's your academic performance? Well, let's... Agree? Yes, well... Let, Let's admit it, management engineering is quite hard, and mm -hmm. so we have to balance everything. Mm -hmm. And so I would say my grades are pretty balanced mm -hmm. as of now. Fighting for an uh, honor on, on our list? The honor roll, hopefully, yes, quite near, but not quite near, but <laughs> still a little bit uh -huh. challenging. Uh -huh. But you, how much time do you devote in studying in, in, in a day? And so in ME, this would take, for me, apart from classes in the morning mm -hmm. and sometimes in the afternoon, I devote more time at home when I get home, maybe an hour or two studying. And let's say when it comes to final season or exam period, then this duration would be longer. I've also read that you want to be a business, aside from being a business consultant, an entrepreneur, you want to have, of course, definitely you have to have your own business. Yes. But does this mean that you're going to leave your family-owned business? Yes, I think a lot of people would think that I would 
Eve, my family business. Uh -huh. However, for me, my family business is something I hold dear. Okay. It is something that I would try to carry and uplift it from its current state. So for me, as a second generation to the business, mm -hmm. it is my duty to bring that legacy of my father and my relatives to what we dream it, it to be. Mm -hmm. But uh, are they ready for you to be out, to have your own business? Well, I think an entrepreneur can have a lot as of many. business, <laughs> as many businesses. <laughs> yes. like, like what I'm doing now, I'm holding uh -huh. um, my organizations and I'm juggling this uh, working on my family business. So it's just a, a lot of balance and it takes a lot from a person, but definitely doable. But why put up your own business if just not concentrate with the family business you have right now? Well, of course, I want to build up on my father's legacy, my relative's legacy. Through your own? Through, through my own innovations oh. within the company, okay. yes. However, looking forward, I want something to be from my own name. Okay. Right. However, I think it will take some time. I just have to ensure that my family business is not the priority, of course. So once it's built, once it's set, of course, I can step aside just a little bit to establish my own thing. Mm -hmm. And what kind of business are you planning to have? Well, for me, since we're already in the hardware industry, I'm looking into construction. Oh, okay. So construction is Why? a very... Close to the business. It's very close to the business. So I'm... <laughs> quite familiar with the field mm -hmm. however it may take some time for me to actually build knowledge or physical knowledge about it mm -hmm. and so working in the hardware would help me understand the field more and so eventually construction business is very lucrative okay. and looking at marikina we're still at a young economic state mm -hmm. because ondoy has a reset there's a lot of factors that go into um, the current, the city's current um, economic state. Mm -hmm. And so eventually, as we go progress, construction will be there. Mm -hmm. Construction fosters the economic growth for the city. And Seagull, our hardware, and hopefully my, my own firm or company in the future can help build more homes, build more establishments, and contribute to the growth of Marikina City. And maybe flood control system improve it? Yes, of course. <laughs> but you know, there's there's a lot of specialties that go okay, into construction. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So mm -hmm. yeah, right now looking at housing and um, let's say commercial buildings. When when do you do you intend to materialize all these goals? Well, I am pretty young, so okay. first of all, I have to finish my studies uh -huh. and eventually try to get some experience in the work workforce, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm guessing around 10 years from now, I'll be able to establish my own. But mm -hmm. as soon as now, I'm already working at my family business. So. Okay. Don't you have any fears and doubts of having your own business? Well, there are a lot of fears and doubts in starting any business. Okay. Admittedly, businesses are... Like what? Yeah, they are high risk. So for me, it's like, let's say, your investment. Mm -hmm. That's your own hard-earned money. Or let's say your parents' money that you loan inherited right mm -hmm. and so there's a lot of money that goes into a business mm -hmm. so putting that money at risk is really something to fear for mm -hmm. however if you calculate the risks and if you mitigate the um, disasters it's surely a good opportunity to look at. Mm -hmm. so when you're gonna start a business you're banking on your family's financial health well as of now yes because I currently I've worked outside my family business. Mm -hmm. So I'm currently saving also from my work at Seagull uh -huh. and also some allowances. Uh -huh. And also I had some side hustles from, let's say, high school. Uh -huh. And so that will all pool together and eventually get to my uh, minimum um, investment value. Business loans? Business loans, maybe for now, not so much. Uh -huh. And loans are quite tricky. Yeah. So there's interest rates that I have to look after for. Mm -hmm. And so with saving up and since that my time in school, and, you know, it's still a quite a long time. Mm -hmm. I'm sure to be able to save enough money to, you know, start my business mm -hmm. as my own money. Are you the eldest? Yes, I'm the eldest. Ah, okay. How, how smart are you as a kuya? 
Matthew Takuya, uh, strict. <laughs> <laughs> How many are you? How many siblings do you have? Oh, so I only have one sister. Ah, okay. That's no, no wonder you're so strict. Yeah, uh -huh. so I ensure that, you know, my values are her values. And uh -huh. I really try to make sure that I take care of her. She's in college also? No, no, no. Not She's still yet. in high school. Ah, okay. And how are you as a son? As a son, studios. Yeah, studios, mabait, right? Uh -huh. All those things that we think of a good son, uh -huh. right? So as an incorporator, do you argue some business discussions with your parents? Well, there are a lot of business discussions that happen in the, in the family in the setting, right? Okay. And so I have some input, but I wouldn't say argue okay. because as of now, I'm still pretty young. Mm -hmm. My opinion may be quite lower valued than yeah. theirs because. They've been working for what, 20, 25 years plus? Uh -huh. So their opinions matter more and they gravitate towards a better output. But your opinion is definitely not a nil opinion because it's still an opinion coming from a young generation. It is, it truly really is. And uh -huh. so eventually I'm building up, like what I said, I took my course, management engineering, I'm doing my organization work. So both of these help in my opinion making and eventually these will build to where I want it to be. But as of now, I'm giving my opinions. And so from time to time, they take it, but not really argue. Have you applied some of the theories in school in, in the family business? Well, definitely since Seagull Hardware is a very, not, not old, let's uh -huh. say it's a business that's been there for quite a long time and mm -hmm. has been successful over mm -hmm. the years. However, looking into the, um, future side of it, future aspect of things, um, we're not quite there yet. Mm -hmm. And so my technical, technical logic, technical know how ability, yes, and other factor or other frameworks that I learned from school are slowly applied. So formalities within the corporate system and so and some Excel work, mm -hmm. that's what I'm currently helping with. But do they, they do some listen your your parents? They listen to your opinion of course, some of your opinions. Definitely. Um, when it comes your to suggestions. Yeah, suggestions. When, when my when my suggestions come into play, um, these usually um, are recognized. Mm -hmm. They go into more of a technological aspect because they're not quite familiar yeah, with it definitely. anymore. Uh -huh. So looking into that suggestion basis they would really follow me in that area. Okay. Now, as an aspiring entrepreneur, looking outside from your family business, what do you think is the hardest part of being an entrepreneur? Okay. Well, the hardest part of being an entrepreneur is failing. And failing is really out there when you're in the field of entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. your, your first venture, your second venture, even your third venture might be a success or might mm -hmm. be a fail. Mm -hmm. And so the hardest part is trying to keep your spirits up. You know, trying to live that entrepreneurial dream would be very hard, but so long as you have the heart and good calculations, eventually it will pull through. And maybe the people you're working with also hel helps. Yes, the camaraderie with the relationship with your, the, your network, yes. your company, your coworkers. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what is your favorite part of becoming an entrepreneur? Well, for me, it's actually creating the idea or the idea of the business. Because when we talk about a business, we try to emphasize a problem. Mm -hmm. and, and so this problem, we want to give solutions to. So it's quite like a game that I like to play, mm -hmm. like trying to find the best solution to that problem. Mm. And you present it to the body. Yes, of that course. That kind of problem you have. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And what is the most challenging part of it? Um, the most challenging part of it will actually be the creation of it. Okay. So even if I would like to make the uh, ideas, the creation and the validation it takes to actually become a business mm -hmm. would be very hard because the creation and validation of it would need um, studying, research, and proper analysis for it to be, to succeed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. And as a business student, what do you think every aspiring entrepreneur must possess? I think one thing that every aspiring entrepreneur must have mm -hmm. is the heart. 
The feeling. The feeling, the feeling. Because entrepreneurship, although it's a very popular field that everybody takes into, because every like, school, offers. every school, yes, <laughs> it's really something that you have to have in the heart. Mm -hmm. Because even if people may think that you need the brains for it, sometimes it just takes luck, sheer dedication, and obviously some know-how. Mm -hmm. And know-how can be learned through experience yeah. eventually. Uh -huh. So and so school. long as you have the heart and school, uh -huh. it, it will definitely work out. As an incorporator of your family business, what are some of your biggest learning experiences in managing? Well, I think for me, getting involved in the family business very early on would be the camaraderie with the employees, and the people we work with. So I think we have to understand that the circumstances between our employees and the admins is something that we have to look into as well. Mm -hmm. So we have to establish that relationship because when we have good morale and we have good relationships with the clientele, the employees, the business overall will work fluidly. Mm -hmm. And what makes a good business leader? What makes a good business leader would actually be, you know, the somebody who knows how to listen. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't know how to listen, it takes a lot of opinions, a lot of factors that could benefit the company overall. And as, might, as much as we th might want to think that we are the best at what we're doing, sometimes we're at the, we're at the wrong. Mm -hmm. And so people's opinions can help mend our goals are pushes towards success mm -hmm. into something more act real. Mm. Pursue your plans for the company? Yes, something Probably. like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, what advice can you give to someone who plans to start his or her own business? Well, like what I'm doing now, I'm currently saving a lot of money just mm -hmm. for that investment in the future. And so, we have to analyze whether or not we are ready or capable to establish that business from the get-go. Mm -hmm. Because establishing a business is not really something you do from the first idea or first, like, first thought of it, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to analyze the market, whether or not you should entry. And there's a lot of frameworks that are easily accessible and learned online or in school. But you have to make sure that it's a viable market, and if your investment is really worth investing for. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. Um, in terms of managerial, Matt, how important is it to, to any young entrepreneur? Sorry? Managerial skill. How important is it to entrepreneurs like you? Well, um, yeah, so entrepreneurs like, young entrepreneurs like me tend to have a lot of, let's say, ideas. Not just technical. Not just technical Imagine ideas. You need to listen. Yes. It's yes. your heart. So management is more on what? So management is more um, trying to apply the things, mm -hmm. and try to apply everybody's ideas into one um, common goal. And mm -hmm. that common goal is to, let's say, give that business a profit mm -hmm. uh, or, let's say, sustainably, your co company can be an investment socially. Mm -hmm. right? And so, wh whatever the goal, Management allows you to cr collect ideas, help others into that one common goal. Mm. As an entrepreneur also, which is more important, the IQ or the EQ? Well, entrepreneurial skills would need both. Uh -huh. But if I were to choose one, it would be EQ. Because like what I said earlier, you have to listen, you mm -hmm. have to understand situations. And if you have the street smarts and understanding the emotional capacity of people, mm -hmm. you're sure to make the output very good. Mm -hmm. So what do you anticipate most about entrepreneurship? Well, I'm anticipating a fun ride, but it's a up and down ride, uh -huh. as we all know. Because entrepreneurship is not steady. There's highs and there's lows. Mm -hmm. And obviously, we just have to make sure that we're capable of riding the highs and the lows. And the erratic flow of exactly the financial side of it, right? Yes. And what is the hardest? 
um, let's say the financial side would be hard mm -hmm. because you know it's something that we all grew up with right we understand that money is something that we need to survive mm -hmm. but you know there comes to a point when in entrepreneurship where you have to be numb to these kinds of things mm -hmm. you have to understand that there are times where your your money is going to go negative but in time it will slowly go back to the pace that you want and so cash flow of a company can really vary from time to time but so long as you can stomach it so long as you can see where it's where the trajectory is at it's all right mm -hmm. at this point man how prepared are you now in putting up your own business not, not minding the financial side of it mm. but mentally physically how ready are you to have your own well you know going through a school going to abm accounting business and management in my school mm -hmm. um, i think it readily it already prepared me to become an entrepreneur mm -hmm. so they were able to give me some foundations on um, the financials aspects and gave me an opportunity to try making my own business mm -hmm. and eventually in the summer years or my break i was able to sell some um sell some things on the side mm -hmm. what if your parents will tell you okay matt we give you this much amount are you ready to have your own business yes 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 of course but then like what i said earlier we have to um understand the certain context mm -hmm. and even if my dream is construction at 19 Mm -hmm. Nobody would contract a 19-year-old <laughs> to uh -huh. work on a big construction in this uh, mm -hmm. construction project. Mm -hmm. So, as of now, maybe just a small retail type of thing. Mm -hmm. Are you not contemplating on that kind of thing, small retail business? Well, as of now, I have a lot on my plate, right? Okay. And like what I said during my break, I did sell some things on the side: ergonomic chairs, mm -hmm. um, air purifiers. Ooh, very coming from your company no 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 it was you buy a, it outside and yes you sell it? i bought wholesale and sold retail really? yes 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 so this was done during the pandemic where mm -hmm. we were all quite um phased about what mm -hmm. was happening we didn't know where it was gonna head mm -hmm. and so i took initiative and sold some chairs and those purifiers just because a lot of people are working from home mm -hmm. and a lot of people are um health conscious now uh -huh. yeah and who keeps the money of the course kids? it's me <laughs> yeah so you it's don't share it to your parents well it's it's my own money they gave me an initial loan even the capital yeah 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 so so your long as i paid saving? back the yeah so i have my own savings so long as i paid back the initial loan that they gave me then i was okay with it mm -hmm. so they they were okay with me keeping my own money mm -hmm. but, okay ah Wait, what Yes. Why yes. not hire someone? Okay. Rolling. Okay. Three, two, one. So who keeps this, the the income of your own business? For the income of my own business, yes. of course, it will be for my own. Okay. Right. So it's in savings, and sometimes I invest in other things. But the capitalization came from where? From my parents. So they gave me an initial loan for me to be able to buy the. Um, stocks uh -huh. but eventually when Have i you paid them yes of course <laughs> so w w How once, long? <laughs> well it, it took i think a month and a half or really? close to two months for two months you have already the roi yes because the the way the contract with the supplier worked was it was a consignment so once oh. i did once i showed good faith in selling mm -hmm. the products paying the money mm -hmm. up front with the money that my parents gave me eventually the consignment agreement worked and so the money just kept rolling in and i didn't have to put up more capital but unless how I long is the consignment fun. period so the consignment per period for the chairs uh -huh. would be around two to three weeks mm. so those two Ooh, to three weeks really? i have to sell my stock and then i have to you make get sure. it if it's still there if yeah it's being sold you get so, it the stock and you will return and get another one is that so the process the process was I would get the products, okay. try to sell them. If I could not sell them, I would have to talk to the supplier and um, try to give it back. Mm -hmm. But of course, I tried to make a tight deadline wherein I sell all my things. Ah. Yeah. So you also mentioned that you plan to go online selling. What happened? 
Well, when I tried to go online selling, unfortunately, it was already the time I went into school. Okay. And since school or management engineering is already known to be a tough course, I had to cut the business, uh, business flow short. And so, so stop. So full stop. Oh, yeah. sayang naman. Yeah. Well, I think I set up a good foundation for it. Mm -hmm. But knowing that I won't put my 100% in the business mm -hmm. would mean that eventually it would fail. Eventually, that eventually it might cost me a negative, right? Yeah, yeah. And you're, what happened that. to your clients? Are they not looking for more stocks? Well, the clients would look for stocks, but of course, since they know I'm a student, mm -hmm. um, they're very understanding of what happened. Okay. Now let's go to your recent conquest, pageantry. Yes. Why join Mr. International Philippines? Well, Mr. International Philippines is one of the biggest platforms here in the Philippines. It's mm -hmm. the biggest male pageantry mm -hmm. here. And so for me, it's a good place for me to be exposed okay. to the industry of entertainment. Okay. Right? And there's a lot of money that goes into in the entertainment industry. And it's something that I may be interested in. So okay. I'm dipping my feet in lots of industries as of this moment. And because of your young age, that's yes. understandable. <laughs> so there's a lot of places where I can end up. Uh -huh. But you know, for me, the entertainment industry is for a uh, way for me to build charisma, build exposure, and build network. yeah network as mm. well. But is this aligned to your vision as an aspiring entrepreneur? Well, yes. To be an entrepreneur is to constantly develop, and I think by by me joining a pageant that fosters development in men mm -hmm. would mean that I'm going to my goal, right? Mm. And so by joining this pageant, it allows me to become more vocal. It allows me to become more, um, let's say, a personality. So somebody with a clientele that comes to me, I would be more um, approachable, mm -hmm. right? So the, these types of things come, in, come, from the, come from the entertainment industry. Uh -huh. But is this your personal decision, joining the pageant? Well, there are a lot of people that told me to join. Who's this. the culprit? Who's the culprit? <laughs> oh, definitely my mom and aunt. Yeah. Oh. So they were the ones who encouraged me to go because mm -hmm. they were, this was actually my mom's dream as well to go into pageantry, modeling, mm -hmm. right? And so. But you never tried that during my high school, modeling? Well, during high school, I was really focused getting into ME, management uh, engineering. Okay. So tunnel vision at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your dad, what was the reaction when he learned that you're joining this pageant? Well, at first he was shocked, of course, <laughs> being uh, that traditional, very uh -huh. traditional. Um, we're very private as well. Mm -hmm. So it was a very shocking experience for him. But eventually he understood that it was for my own personal development, my own, um, that I did want it for mm -hmm. me to grow, right? And so when I was given the opportunity, I talked to my dad and we talked about it and said that, and we agreed that it would be good for me to develop my um, skills with people and get that little bit of exposure to, you know, help the business. Not much time of convincing. Yes, not much time, <laughs> but it was a really quick decision as well, you know, mm -hmm. because they're very supportive. Ah, oh, like that's that good. Well. Now, um, what kind of preparation are you doing for research? So for the pageant, I'm actually doing gym, mm -hmm. like just toning up my active lifestyle just a little bit more so that I can be fit for the pageant. Mm -hmm. Like I know, I know I'm not the, uh, I'm, I'm quite small, right? But then eventually I'll get there where the ideal pageantry vision is. What's the reaction of your school, your classmates? Well, of course, they're proud and they're <laughs> very, they're very shocked, honestly. Uh -huh. Well, you know, you know, just, just, just so you know, uh, when I told it to them, they were like, wow, like they, they never thought that I would do it mm -hmm. because I would just do some small hosting gigs mm -hmm. here and there, mm -hmm. but never something this big. Mm -hmm. And so when I joined something this big, they were very shocked to see that I was capable of doing this. Mm -hmm. And that, that goes hand in hand with what I said that I do want personal growth and this is one big milestone for me. Mm -hmm. Um, are you hopeful that one of the major titles will belong to you? Definitely, definitely. <laughs> there are seven titles we are currently competing for and we are competing 
for at least one of them. Uh -huh. So it's a very challenging competition with us being 55 candidates from all over the Philippines. Mm -hmm. We are very all um, promising candidates to win the title of Mr. International. And so, yeah, we'll just have to see in the 28th. Uh -huh. uh, do you think male pageants nowadays are still relevant? Well, of course, male pageantry is relevant, especially today. Because Why? today we want to, you know, the social media really emphasizes the whole spectrum, right? Mm -hmm. So, females, the Bini Bini Pilipinas, the big pageantry, where the money, where everybody's investing at. Mm -hmm. And then we have the growing male, in the male pageantry. So, it's still growing. And I would say it's going to become relevant in the next few years. And also the others were in the LGBTQ, mm -hmm. right? There's a lot of pageantry that goes into it. Uh, there's a lot of uh, new pageants that are coming up. Yeah, and so, a lot of pageants, yes, both yes. male and female. Male, female, all of it, mm -hmm. right? And so... Aren't you that young yet to join a pageant? Well, yes, yes, yes. So I'm 19 and yeah. of course people would think I would focus on school, just school. Uh -huh. but. Um, I think I learned from my course being a jack of all trades um, really helps you in the long run. So um, whether it be showbiz or business or my own academics, it would be great to make sure that, you know, I dip my feet in everything. Win or lose, do you intend to join another pageant in the future? Well, definitely there's a lot of pageants that there's a lot of opportunities to join other pageants beyond Mr. International. Mm -hmm. But for now, of course, we are focusing on Mr. International, but in the future, should an opportunity come, why not? Mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, yes, that's true. Now, as a 19-year-old pageant enthusiast, what do you think is the biggest problem confronting the youth of our country today? Okay, and so the youth today, we are, you know, victims of the mass consumerism online. Mm -hmm. So what I mean by mass consumerism is we all know the likes of e-commerce, right? Mm -hmm. It's a very new industry, but heavily affecting the lives of the young people, the young people but not even the young people now, right? Uh -huh. um, the culture now. Too much now, technology, what do you yes, think? Yes, too much, too much. But I think the technology now is actually a good sign where we're progressing. And if you would actually look into it, the e-commerce sector does bring a lot of um, uh, economic growth to the country. Mm -hmm. But also, we have to be aware that us as consumers have to know that spending online is also spending household income. Mm -hmm. So we have to be careful on what we spend. We have to make sure that we spend on our needs first. And especially now with the youth, we have to make sure that we know how to save. Because if we spend all our money at a very young age, we might not know how to manage our money in the future. Mm -hmm. And as we know, the youth is the future. And so if there's a lot of people that don't know how to manage their money, uh, our country is going to be stagnant. Our country may even be at a regression if this would, to, if, if this would continue. Mm -hmm. Do you think the, the government must also support the youth sector in planning their future? Well, definitely. I think the government as of today is supporting the youth sector. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of um, initiatives like yeah. SK. Projects projects, right? There's SK, but also the focus on education. Okay. I truly admire the education that we have now. And so we have to ensure that kids or children go to school because this is how they learn um, the foundations. And mm -hmm. once they have the foundations, eventually they get exposed to more fields, more industries that allow them to become um, contributing members of society. You mentioned about the SK. You have plans to run? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe not, not yet, not okay, yet. Uh, um, I have a lot on my plate right now, but okay. you know, SK is there and I do admire their work. Mm -hmm. They are very hardworking and they are very, you know, very connected to the community. Yeah, yeah. nice way to give gain back. network. Right? Gain network, give back. Yes, it's a uh, very good thing. Okay. What do you think of the AI apps now being peddled on social media? Well, you know, the AI industry is very interesting. Yeah. Um, it makes you the mad. Uh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. But we have to take note that the AI industry is something new. 
right? Okay. When the internet first came... Are you dependent on the AI, AI app? <laughs> no, 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 research? no, no. Of course not. <laughs> I think, I wouldn't say fully dependent, but I do use it from time to time okay. to um, help research. in my work, to research. Because okay. it is a tool, yeah. after all. Oh. Right, so the AI um, field or spectrum right now online is very interesting. Because it's coming at a blazing speed wherein there's um, an AI company that's new. Google already has an AI. Microsoft has an AI. Mm -hmm. So eventually, the AI is just going to be wide, widespread, right? Mm -hmm. But we have to take note that AI is a tool. Okay. So when we use these chatbots, let's say, or let's say the it's so image, anyway, go yeah, on. image <laughs> generators, oh. right? We have to... Remember that these are tools, yeah. and eventually tools to make you lazy. No, not no, <laughs> not so much. There, there's a fine boundary, okay. and, and so I think in the states there are some regulations with um, AI mm -hmm. that are being explored with. But not here yet. Not here yet. Yeah. And so anybody can check it, right? Yes, yes, yes. The <laughs> AI, the AI chatbots uh -huh. here in the Philippines are just like. We're just replicating what's in the States. Mm -hmm. And so it's not really out there yet. And so we're still trying to develop it here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But in the future, in the near future, it's something that will be readily accessible to everybody. It will become a tool like our phones, yeah. right? When you use your phones. Is it good for students? Yes, of course. Um, when we first, just, just, just think about it. When we first found out about social media, okay. everybody thought it was toxic. But uh -huh. obviously, there are some points to extent that of it can course. be toxic. Uh -huh. But it, it has helped um, the country or the world even to become more connected. Mm -hmm. right? So how many social media platforms do you maintain? Um, <laughs> as of now, I'm currently maintaining only three. Okay. So Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Ah, okay. TikTok. Why TikTok? Well, TikTok is a, the fastest growing app as of now. Mm -hmm. um, fastest growing social media with a lot of users, you know, being able to interact with the creators. And so me joining the pageant would um, it incentivize me to join TikTok because mm -hmm. you know the market's followers. there, the followers there. Yeah. And so by joining TikTok, you know, you try <laughs> to connect with your fan base more. Mm -hmm. And how much time do you ask the Google University in your schoolwork? <laughs> the the Google University. <laughs> well, uh, schoolwork wise, Google is a big help. Okay. We also have a lot of um, research material or research tools given by the university. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's say 30 minutes to an, for an assignment, ratio 1 to 3. Uh -huh. So uh, one, one part would be um, knowledge, your own base knowledge. One would be, second would be common sense, and third would come from Google mm -hmm. or like I, research. And you don't have, have time to visit the library? Well, from time to time, I do visit the library. However, quite busy as of the moment. Uh, what's the best business book you've read? Um, the best business book I've read would be How to Sell. By? By, I don't remember the title. Uh, okay. uh, the, the, the author. The author. Uh, it's a local? No, no, no. It was, uh, it's from the States. Okay. So this business looked into um, selling his own business. So he was, mm -hmm. a, he was a creator of a marketing firm. And this marketing mm -hmm. firm was his bread and butter. Okay. So eventually he grew it to become something that he wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. And there was talks of him slowing down. And mm -hmm. so eventually he decided that there comes to a point in a business where you have to learn to sell. Mm -hmm. And I think I connected to this, this uh, book a lot because of my own family business, okay. right? So my own family business has a lot of let's say, prospect in the future. Uh -huh. And so this book allowed me to learn through a perspective, a perspective wherein you want to sell, mm -hmm. right? I learned that you have to be able to set your company up to a point where it can manage its, itself. And hopefully in the future, I could build the business to become a self-sustaining business mm -hmm. that I can leave at the side and also pursue my own business, oh, right? Yeah. Based on the guidance of the book? Yes, based on the guidance of the book. <laughs> okay. Now, what are your strengths and weaknesses? Well, my strengths and weaknesses, that's a very tough question, right? So strengths, I would say my charm, <laughs> my good looks, and my business acumen, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, 
these strengths I built and developed over the and course the mind, of, of course. Yes, my mind. <laughs> yeah. Um, these strengths I built through the course of my high school, college, and my whole life. And so these are something that I pride myself of. Mm. So one thing I really do like is I learned is madras to do more than what is expected mm. of you. So I believe that's one part of my strengths. And your weaknesses? And my weaknesses, let's say I would be um, overcommitted sometimes mm. and very... Too trusting. Yeah, too trusting, yeah. Somewhat in those lines. <laughs> yeah. So what talent are you going to show, to showcase during the pageant? Well, in, the, in this pageant, unfortunately, we don't have a talent section. Oh. But I do have some works with the hosting Mm, um, yeah. yeah, hosting scenery. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are portions where you're gonna host some of the segments. Uh, for uh, this pageant, activity. no, no, no. I know. Yeah. Ah, okay. Now, what advice can you give to your co youth Well, save. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, my advice for the youth today would be to jump out of their comfort zone, mm -hmm. because as a kid, I would never would have thought that I would be here sitting in this interview or being in the pageant mm -hmm. or going, going, trying to start my own business, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's very big dreams ahead of you. Mm -hmm. As a kid, you tend to live in these ideas, these dreams, these fantasies, but you ha there comes a point where you have to make them into a reality. Mm -hmm. So to make them into a reality would come from um, your own, your own sheer will, your own heart, and you have to jump that comfort zone because we're all here as kids. You mm. have to jump over that, that zone where we're comfortable. And I do have this um, feeling mm -hmm. when I'm trying something new. It's parang nasusuka, right? You're kind of nauseous. You don't know if this is the right decision or you're scared, right? Okay. But for me, that feeling of nausea is actually a sign that I'm heading towards um, the right direction because when you feel discomfort that's when you are about to succeed oh oh sabi nila when you don't feel relaxed <laughs> yeah so you have to jump out <laughs> yes uh -huh. now um is showbiz in the pipeline well definitely there are opportunities that come into play mm -hmm. and so showbiz is something that i will look into like a good business decision right mm, really so if the opportunity presents itself why not? We check it, we understand, we do our research, mm -hmm. and if the price is right, uh, yeah. then we'll, we'll do showbiz. Uh, when you say showbiz, does it, it, it entails acting, movies? Well, for now, hosting is really what I'm um, looking at, right? Mm -hmm. But if acting and, let's say, theater would be there, why not? We'll give it a shot. Let's see if I have what it takes. But of course, I still have to build the talent there. So it may be some time before you see me on the screen. <laughs> mm. What advocacy are you carrying in this pageant? For this pageant, I'm actually carrying the advocacy of youth empowerment and PWD empowerment. Oh, why, 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 why did you choose that? So youth, first of all, would be, because like what I said earlier, mm. like I want the youth to go beyond just thinking, just mm. dreaming, to actually actualizing their their dreams in motion, mm -hmm. right? And as for the PWDs, I feel like this sector needs a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. I think as of now, people are trying, are realizing that mental health is an issue, yeah. right, from the pandemic. But for me, the PWDs still feel all, all of these concerns, right? Mm -hmm. From mental health to their um, privileges, to even their recognition and them being respected. Mm -hmm. These problems still stand until today, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So unless we do something about it, like unless we share the spotlight to them, mm -hmm. these problems will be the same. Mm -hmm. Are you supporting any organization with this kind of advocacy? So for now, for the PWDs, we're mm -hmm. current, I'm currently an active, uh, not say, let's say volunteer, but then I just time to time I visit because I'm very concerned about the PWD. So I visit the NCDA from time to time. And what's the name? NCDA. And so Matt, you're supporting the group NCDA. What, what does it mean? 
So NCDA is actually the National Council for Disability Affairs. Ah, okay. Do you have any concrete project for them right now? So as of now, the most concrete I can think of would be a uh, meet and greet mm -hmm. for the or the welcoming back of our Philippine para chess team. Mm -hmm. So this Philippine para chess team went to Cambodia to compete. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, they won gold, mm -hmm. silver, and even bronze mm -hmm. medals mm -hmm. for the Philippines. And I'm very proud of them to see that, you know, despite the disabilities that they have, mm -hmm. they still continue to progress in their own um, favorite field as chess and, and compete proud. abroad and, you know, be respected in that international mm -hmm. scene. Will there be a big party to welcome them? Well, of course, it would be a uh, welcoming <laughs> that they would look in for. Yeah, yeah that's good. Now, Matt, in three words, how would you describe yourself? So, three words. Hmm. Let's say charming, mm -hmm. insightful, and last but not least, mapagmahal. Ah, uh, <laughs> mentioning mapagmahal. On the life's third side, how's love life? Love life. Well, of course, we're still single. Okay. But, you know, love life. Ready to mingle. Ready, ready to mingle, <laughs> of course. But, you know, we still have to focus on um, school, work, and, and also... business. Yeah, <laughs> business. Now, on, now, if you want to promote anything on how to support you in your quest for the Mr. International Philippines, please do. So, I would love that. Thank you for this opportunity. Sure, of course. Um, yeah, so I'm Mr. Marikina for Mr. International Philippines 2023. And I would like to invite you this coming June 28th in the Newport um, Center in Manila. Yes, so we will be competing here, all 55 candidates. And so please, I would like to ask for your support. So you can support me by liking my Facebook page, Instagram, and even TikTok. And they all have a handle of Matthew.Siegel. But please don't forget that there is a voting system in place for Mr. International and this would be seen in my Facebook and uh, Mr. International Philippines official page. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. On that note, thank you very much for sharing your time with us and sharing your, your uplifting story. And I hope you have inspired some aspiring entrepreneurs and the youth. And good luck to your future plans and good luck to Mr. International Philippines 2023. Thank you so much, Mario. Okay. On, on, at this point, we would like to thank Mr. Eugene Yap, the general manager of Bayview Park Hotel Manila, your home by the bay, and to Ms. Verni Galang, the sales and marketing manager, and her assistant, Ms. Shannon Sornet, and also to Mr. Neil Digia for facilitating this interview. Thank you very much, and to Fritzy of Nessa Celia Salon. Uh, they have three branches right now in Metro Manila. And hi to a good friend of mine, Arthur Catibo, now based in Italy for the support. Thank you, thank you very much. Till next week, as we bring you more encouraging stories and uplifting episodes. Only here on Heads Up!